Okay, so when was the last time the Air Force flew this thing? Well, the last B-29 in active service when left active service in 1960. Wow. Uh, it first flew in 1942, and it first entered service in 1944 in the Pacific Theater. Now, realize that uh, the Pacific Theater, we didn't have the islands yet that we had had to take for the B-29s to fly off, let's say, Guam, Tinian, uh, those areas. So we were flying out of China. We were flying out of airfields in China that laborers in China made from breaking up rocks to make runways. Wow, runways. no Tens way. of thousands of people, okay? Uh, and unfortunately, the early results uh, were very, very poor because they had to, it was basically for every gallon of fuel hauled into China, they burned too. Wow. So uh, once the islands were taken, like, uh, you know, Guam, Tinian, then the B-29s really had a forward operating base to operate off of. Now, even though, even still, you know, it was still, I believe, 1,500 miles to Japan. So 3,000 mile round trip. Two bomb bays, so you could carry a lot more bombs and tonnage in this. One thing about the B-29, it was the first bomber that was pressurized. So just like the airliners you get on yeah. today, you don't have to wear oxygen masks and he heated flight suits. This was pressurized. Oh, nice. B-17s and B-24s were not. So this was a major leap forward. Even the construction inside the wings is still used today. It's a web construction. So this was a major, major leap forward. This was like the stealth bomber B-2 of its day, okay? There were no gunners in the turrets. They all used remote sites. It was a computerized fire control system. Uh, one of the things that really uh, the General LeMay ended up using to get results was bringing these airplanes in at 5,000 feet over Japan and dropping fire bombs. Wow. And the fire bomb raids or the incendiary raids actually killed many, many more thousands of people in one night than the atomic bombs did. Wow. In one night on Tokyo, I think the casualties were, because all their buildings were basically paper and wood, and it would start a firestorm, and it would create its own wind and its own weather. One night, 200,000 casualties. Wow. You know, so uh, the Japanese, uh, the Imperial Japanese, uh, got to the point where they were so desperate that they wouldn't even try to fire on the B-29s. They would do kamikaze attacks on them and try and ram them to knock them out of the sky, and some did. Uh, the only real problem with the B-29, it was rushed into combat. They had fires on the engines. That would give them problems. But as far as the airplane itself, uh, it could fly higher and faster than any other thing that was in the world at the time. At the time. How many people can be in this one? Uh, I believe it was a crew of 13 uh, because you had uh, pilot, co-pilot, flight engineer, navigator, uh, the Gun, bombardier. Guns in the front. Guns yep, in the, yep. Is there guns in the back too? Oh yeah. Okay. Then you had three people in the waist section and you had a tail gunner. So how you got from the front to the back, since it was pressurized, is you crawled through a tube. Oh. Yeah. Conversely coming forward, going back. You gotta be pretty quick on that. Yes, you would. Oh yes, my you goodness. Would. So, uh, you know, there were about 4,000 B-29s built. And to... you had to stay in shape for that. You yes, can... you did. Yeah, you couldn't yes, get... <laughs> you did. Yes, you did. And remember, on the islands, it was very hot and humid. Oh yeah. So, um, you know, I mean, it was a, once you, it would cool off once you got up to altitude. Now, um, you know, the B-29, uh, even today, is, is still a remarkable machine. Here's a little trivia for you. You ever look, you know, Star Wars, the Millennium Falcon? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what inspired that? A B-29 cockpit. Whoa, really? Yeah, yeah. So this is in the Korean War markings. After World War II, the B-29 was still the premier bomber. And then when the Korean War came along in 1950, B-29s were sent to Okinawa to drop bombs to halt the North Koreans advancing into South Korea. Uh, only problem was Soviet and Chinese MiGs, which were jets, came into the picture and rapidly made the B-29 obsolete. They had to fly at night when the MiGs couldn't fly and things oh. of that nature. You know, so. How many bombs could fit in here about? Uh, you could fit uh, at least 12,000 uh, pound bombs or you could fit 20 
you know, the smaller ones, 500 pound bombs. The incendiaries, they could fit a lot more because they were smaller and lighter. And when you look at footage of them dropping these things, it looks like little sticks that they're <laughs> dropping, but they were really lethal. One thing they found out in the uh, air war over Japan in the early days, they were bombing from about 25,000 feet. Wow. And when they dropped the bombs, they found something called the jet stream that they didn't know about before, which drives all the storms around the world, okay? So they'd let their bomb go and the bombs would end up 20 miles away because the wind in the jet stream, 120 miles an hour, would carry them. So they had to come in below that. That's well, when we first started talking about the jet stream in meteorological. Right. How they, <laughs> that yeah. one took a few tries to figure that one out, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, it did, it did. And uh, you know, after the Korean War, uh, they were deemed relatively obsolete. They kept, the Air Force kept some of them in the inventory. Uh, some of them were used for early aerial refueling tankers, photo ships, weather ships. But basically, uh, many of them went to target ranges to be used as targets for other airplanes to blow up. Wow. This particular airplane right here, along with about 50 others, went to Naval Weapons Center China Lake over at Ridgecrest. And they were parked out on the desert, used as targets. And uh, this one survived, as, as many of them did. There's two flying today. Those two really? airplanes came off the range. One is called Doc and one is called Fifi. And they fly around, do the air show circuit. Oh, how fun. Yes, and then uh, the rest are in museums and thankfully they all didn't get blown up and that's why we have as many B-29s in museums today because they were preserved. Now this, this plane did not fly in here. It was built up, trucked in from three different B-29 airframes. Oh my goodness. The best parts and then brought here. The wings were actually uh, cradled in a cradle and helicoptered over or the wow. Sierras and brought in. The airplane was built on site right here. How exciting. Yeah. Okay, so tell us about this part of the plane. This part of the plane is where the bombardier would sit. And his job was to basically, if they were 25 miles out from the target or the IP as they called it, he would fly the airplane straight and level pilot would turn over command to him and he would fly the airplane because especially if he was lead lead airplane everybody bombed on his command so you had to be precise yeah and that bomb site the northern bomb site was a very very highly regarded secret because it had extremely accurate sighting during the war if heaven forbid they were forced down his first order of duty would pull his 45 service revolver pistol out and blow out the optics to make it useless to the enemy uh, he would sit up here, if you can see, that arm was also a gun sight for him to use. So he sat just forward of the pilots. Right behind him was the pilot and the co-pilot. And uh, that's, what that, that's what that position is. Now, one thing I'll tell you is this did not have, the pilot could not control the steering. The only way you controlled steering on here, because there's no gearbox, was differential power on the outboard engines. So you're doing this. Flight engineer wow. sitting behind him. Hey. We need to stay on center line, so differential so power. So that was completely different than oh, other yeah. planes at the yeah. time. You had yeah. to like really be learn yep. how to do this one. Yes, you did. Now keep in mind, during World War II, the need was so great that there were pilots with 300 hours total time, which is nothing that would because be it flying time airplanes. To get it. You need to get it. You need to. We need to have pilots. You need to get out. Yeah, right, you need right. to get. And uh, a lot of people ask, what are all these bombs for? That's every completed mission that the really? airplane came back from, yep. That is really impressive, oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a fast counter, I'll say. <laughs> well, I'm not that, either. That's really impressive. Math was never my best subject. <laughs> <laughs> and then just on this side, right? Not on the other yeah. side, this is, but yeah. that is, that is yeah. very Typically impressive. it's this side, and then the other side, sometimes they have what they call nose art on there, which was in wartime, it was, uh, you know, anything from soup to nuts they'd put on there it could even be their girlfriend it could be whatever you right. know but it was a morale booster is what that was so you can see she's on a bomb it's raisin hell raisin was a radar that's on the belly oh so the raisin radar uh, helped you know bomb by radar as well if you had some cloud cover or something of that nature where the target wasn't completely clear they could use that system as well so again, for the years, very technologically advanced airplane. That is beautiful. And um, is this open for open cockpit? 
Uh, we try to have, you know, a window or something open. It's tricky to get into because you, you, the way you get into it is you see up through this nose wheel section here, there's a hatch. You have to crawl up a ladder wow. and push a hatch open. I'm, I'm just curious to go and try yeah. to crawl from one side to another to see how long that takes me. We can, yeah, we can do that someday <laughs> when it's cold because when it's hot, oh, it's miserable. I in there. can only imagine. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's a, uh, it's an interesting airplane. At some point, I would love to at least get the whole front section restored and show off because it's a really, really neat airplane uh, built again, not only by Boeing, but uh, I believe uh, La uh, Martin built some and I believe uh, Lockheed built some under contract because they had to build so many of them. So, but what was learned here was applied, you know, and there's always a, an educational thing, a, a learning curve. Right. So what we learn from military application trickles down to civilian application and transfers into civilian airliners, putting that technology into things we can benefit from. And I think it is over a hundred, if I'm not mistaken, with my uh, little fast math. Could, because could very like, well be. Yeah. It's like 25, 25, 25, and yep. then above. So I think it's over close to a hundred or a little over a hundred. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for talking to us today. And oh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Glory, 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 glory.